Welcome to the exciting world of Pachyderm Video. Now we invite you to join us for a video safari that stampedes you through the jungle world of Pachyvideo, where you'll be treated to a behemoth collection of six mammoth concept videos by Guardian, Halo, Richie Fure, JC Crew, and The Herd. All in addition to never before seen thundering live concert footage from Mastodon. And who better to take us on this musical visual journey than those old Zoo Masters themselves, Grammy and Dove Award winning producers and keepers of the keys, John and Dino Elefante. Hi, welcome to the world of Packaging. I'm John Elefante. Hi, I'm Dino Elefante. We're so glad you could drop in today in the middle of this recording session. It's funny that John should say welcome to the world of Pachyderm because this is our world. This is the control room at Studio A in Pachyderm Studios in Los Alamitos, California. We also have a studio affectionately known as Pachyderm West about two doors down. A lot of things happen during a recording session here at Pachyderm. A lot of ups, a lot of downs, a lot of sadness, a lot of joys. When you're involved in music and especially in ministry, there are a lot of things that happen that are unpredictable. We'd like you to just sit back today and relax and maybe even learn something about the recording process and what makes us here at Pachyderm tick. We have a lot of fun making music and we're so grateful that the Lord allows us to make a living in this way. We just ask you to sit back, watch the videos of the artists of Pachyderm, and we ask you to relax and enjoy yourself. Being a musician is... is a very hard occupation to explain to people. People ask me, what's it like to be a musician? It's something that you just can't explain. It's, it's just an expression that lives inside of you that has to come out. It's not a very well-respected profession, the profession that, uh, that I'm in. Um, even now in my 30s, people sometimes even say, well, when are you going to get a real job, you know? You twirl them knobs all day and fiddle around with guitars and amps and play loud music. I know people that have never made a penny in their lives for music that really don't care if they ever make it. I mean, it's just something that whether they make money at it, whether they find fame and fortune at it, it doesn't really matter. They just, it's something that drives them. I know guys that say, well, I'm married now and I have to get out of music. I mean, I have to feed my wife and children. But they always come back to music. It just lives inside your soul like a, a friendly monster. It's something that you just have to keep catering to. It's, it's hard to explain. It's just like a flowing river that is soothing. It's, I don't want to sound too eclectic, but it's, it's something that you just can't get away from. Sometimes we'll sign a band based on other things than just a, a really glitzy demo tape. I mean, it comes down to a lot more than just having a great demo. I mean, a band has to cover all aspects, spiritual, musical. Um, a band has to look good live, and there's a lot of different reasons that we sign a good band. We get folk music, we get alternative music, we get traditional praise and worship. But every once in a while we get that tape from somebody who, as soon as we put it on the tape, we said, you know something? That is a member of the family. We don't only want to get involved with this band, but we want to adopt these people into our family. It's a very unconventional process for Packard to get involved with a band. Because we get so deeply involved, not only in the music, but the spiritual aspect of the band, as well as the band's image. Dino and I, being Italian, we, we come from a family of, of heart. I mean, we come from, we really try to look into the heart of an artist and look into what they're saying lyrically. We like to talk to them on the phone with lengthy conversations and we really get to know a band and really find out where they're coming from spiritually, musically and uh, a lot of times we'll sign a band that has the most horrible demo tape we've ever heard a lot of people are, are sort of under the impression that a band just walks in the studio sets up the instruments and just starts to play I mean, they sing and they play guitars and before an album starts, there's a, a lot of uh, pre-production that we call it that takes place. It can start as, as early as six months before a record takes place. It can start with a phone call 
like from me to Tony from Guardian or Scott from Halo or whoever, can start with a phone call of where do you see this record? What do you want to say? Where are you at in your life? I mean, it can't just be 10 songs that are just songs that we get from other writers. I mean, we talk about a statement that a band wants to make as a band. Well, how do we want to craft the record? How do we want to make, make the record important? How do we want to really make sure that the record has something to say that's in a manner that's tangible? Pre-production, I feel, is a very important aspect of the record because it can delicately teeter on the spontaneity of a record. Sometimes if you get in and you preconceive a record too heavily, you lose that spontaneity in the studio, the performance of the artist and the attitude of the artist. So we're real careful with pre-production. We like to get into the studio, get the band mic'd up, and see what happens. A producer is just sort of a rudder. Just A producer just sort of keeps a, a, a record on path. Um, records tend to stray a lot of different ways because there might be five or six guys in a band that want to go five or six different directions. And the producer has to be that rudder that keeps the direction, that keeps the flow just going the same way. But as a producer, it's our job to have our eye out all the time on the band as a unit and not only, not only exalt this band musically as a unit, but also be able to bring out certain specific things individually that make this band special. And we consider production a very, very intricate job of deciding what doesn't go on the record as opposed to what does go on the record. It's funny because when you're in the studio, a lot of times the lights are dark and you're just staring over a recording console and there's these two speakers looking at you. And these two speakers have to talk to you. There can't only be music coming out, but there needs to be a message. These speakers need to be so distinct and powerful with this message that the, the music just needs to drip with emotion. It needs to drip with passion. It's just that when we're in the post-production process, which we call mixing, and we're about to actually take all the elements of a band and put them together, sometimes 24 to 48 tracks of music, and just put it onto a stereo mix, which is the result that you, the consumer, gets, which is usually a cassette or a compact disc, it's a very hard process of trying to choose what stays in the mix, what's loud, what's not loud, what's supposed to be the essence of the song, does the lyric need to be out front, is it a particular guitar lick. Post-production is a very important process. You know, distribution is a very complicated process because the Christian industry, per se, is so much different than the general record market, whereas there's a record store in every corner. We depend on bookstores who not only sell cassettes and CDs, but you'll walk into a place where there's Christian music for sale. You can buy a belt buckle. You could buy a Jesus Loves You candle. You could buy Bible covers. So the consumer, when they walk into a Christian record store, is hit with all these different decisions of purchasing. And we only hope that the reputation of us, Pachyderm, as a label and the artists on the label is enough to have that consumer make a decision to want to take us home. Uh, Dino and myself, we really try not to get involved with, with the business aspect of Pachyderm because we feel like it's a real conflict of interest. I mean, our motives for making records are, are not money or they're, they're not monetary. But when it comes to the actual packaging of a record, the album cover, what the liner notes say and such, we feel like that is part of the record because what, you see, what the first thing that you see when you pick up a record is, we, you know, we like that first thing you see to be representative of what's inside. When you think of promotion and marketing and radio and retail and video and all of these things that in the general record market are so essential to a band's success, it sometimes seems really foreign because there's just not the venue in the Christian market and the Christian population to have a band on a full-time radio station or a full-time video station that does nothing but plays radio or video 24 hours a day. Boy, I'll never forget that day at Cornerstone in 1991. Well, I just want to thank you for being with us today, and I really hope you've gotten to see an in-depth look at the world of Pachyderm. We refer to the artists on the label here at Pachyderm as our family. On behalf of John and myself and our family at Pachyderm, we'd like to thank you for spending this time with us today. today.